you're thinking, oh, if I do this wrong, to order another bit of material, where normally it was like, you, you'd, you'd price for if something went wrong, but now the prices of the material are so high, customers aren't gonna pay that extra you need. So there's no real bumper anymore. So everything you're doing on a machine has got to be right. Hello and welcome to another MTD podcast. Uh, this one, of course, is being filmed. And we're bringing this to you from uh, the Engineering Technology Group at their headquarters in Wellsbourne. Uh, now, I'm joined by Tom Scabula from MTD CNC, Chloe Reeve from MTD CNC, and uh, the infamous of or famous Steve Brown from the Engineering Technology Group. And one of the themes of this podcast is to talk about, of course, some of the equipment that ETG supply, but some of the, the challenges that engineers are facing these days uh, and how ETG work with them to overcome them. And we'll talk about maybe some specifics as well. Um, the fact we've got Tom and Chloe here, obviously Chloe, bit of history with with ETG it's like, is it bit. like coming home is it like what the lioness is doing at the weekend home. yeah it <laughs> oh, yeah. is <laughs> especially seeing everyone and obviously the branding the quasar machines the Mitsubishi machines it's all what I grew up learning so I was quite young when I started at ETG so this is where I did my apprenticeship and it's nice to always come back and, and this is where you did your apprenticeship this is where yeah. you, you cut your teeth and I know today you've been uh, doing some uh, uh, some videos with Tom where you've been both looking at the machines from a machinist's perspective, haven't you? And yeah, talking about so some of the things that maybe we don't often get so into. So engineer to engineer. Obviously, we love, we love to see the sales point of view, but from an engineer, we were talking about the washdown system, the how many tools did you have in your ATC? Um, why would this machine benefit you? Why would a five-axis benefit you if you're moving from a three-axis machine to a five-axis machine? And why Quasar is a great route down, down that path? Okay, uh, Tom, uh, when you've been doing these with, with Chloe today, she's got great experience, isn't she? Did she teach you a thing or two? Oh, Don't definitely. push it. Don't push it. <laughs> definitely. We did, um, we did a good one on the mill turn, which obviously I wasn't the turner, so I had to really lean on her expertise for that one. So, yeah, she's, she's taught me a lot today. Okay, now those videos will be coming to the MTD CNC channel very soon. Um, Steve, so uh, perhaps maybe tell us what you're seeing that challenges engineers are. Um, in the in the current climate, I mean, the, what, the, will, what the, will resonate? With yeah, the, the top, the top, the top two really is obviously the the skills gap is getting getting people in, and I think that's why you see certainly um, an intake on automation, um, robotics, and pallet ch systems and so forth. Um, but uh, the, the 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 biggest one has got to be the the running of the machines. You know, the the cost of the cost of physically running it and power to that machine. And how? I mean, what's what's your answer to that? Well, we, we've linked up with um, um, a transformer provider, um, and basically it's a green energy saving um, transformer. So I don't know all the, 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 the technical, technical details on it. Um, I know it has a conversion system in there that obviously um, transforms um, the power coming into the machine. Um, this calculating that you, obviously the energy cost for running that machine are con considerably lower. Um, and that, that's what we'll be demonstrating at our, our open house. Okay, we'll come back to that because yeah. you have got an open house. If you just want to tell everybody when that's going to be. Yes, yeah, so the, it's off the top of my head, it's November. I know it's the last week of November on the Wednesday and Thursday. So I'm sure that's the 23rd, we'll, we'll, 24th. We'll put the dates on the screen. <laughs> yeah, so I should know being sales director. Um, so yeah, the, and, and, and from there, like we're talking about today, we're going to have um, issues and passions for, what, for our customers and we're going to table them at that, that event. Looking forward to that one. And um, Tom, you've recently come from the shop floor. What are the what are the challenges that you would have faced uh, currently as a machinist that would have maybe held you back or held the business back? Is there anything that you could think that the audience so, will uh, uh, machine? Some machines would have held us back. So maybe you've turned apart, and then that has to go onto a miller. So then your miller's not free, which then means delivery dates get pushed back. So just simple problems that can really affect delivery times. I mean, what about a big one, things like materials? Did you ever have that recently? Because yeah, we, um, like, obviously material prices have gone up, but also the availability for material, which means your stress is going up as a machinist because you're thinking, oh, if I do this wrong, to order another bit of material, where normally it was like, you, you'd, you'd price for if something went wrong, but now the prices of material are so high, customers aren't gonna pay that extra you need. So there's no real bumper anymore. 
So everything you're doing on a machine has got to be right. So, but then, you, then your machining times are longer because you're spending a lot longer doing doing a part. What you're being more conscious as, as, as to making, not making a mistake. Yeah, yeah, and you're like, you're double checking, triple checking. Is there not any way you could have brought automation into that process or is, is, there, is there newer ways and newer things you could use to make sure that you can still keep the productivity up um, but maybe not have some of those concerns to slow the process down? Well, yeah, exactly. And that, me and Chloe have spoke a lot about that today um, because 99.9% .9 of the time it's human error. A, a machine is, is usually not to blame. You, your machine's not to blame because your machine's only doing what you're telling it to do. So if you've, like we used to say, fat well, what your it, wife does to you, so mm. you're not to blame. Well, exactly. That's what that's what we tell our customers. Well, well, well. Right, okay. Yeah, sorry, carry <laughs> exactly, on. Exactly, I'm never to blame. Um, <laughs> but we, we used to call it, and, we, and you do it by accident, but we used to call it fat fingering, where if you click on a button, but you, you hit two keys at the same time, or... You, you're trying to program something and someone's shouting you and you don't, you get halfway through a program, you're going to something else, you come back, you don't know where you're going, where a machine's going to do exactly what you've told it. So if you've got automation and you've got a robot, it's going to pick it up from the right place, put it down in the right place. So I think automation is really a key subject to keep productivity and to keep your spindles turning. And to potentially minimise some of those risks that you talk exactly, about. Exactly, yeah. Because robots don't have fat fingers, right? Exactly. I you hope know. not. Um, Chloe, it's, it's been a while since you've been out training engineers, but obviously you're now seeing it from a different perspective yeah. when you talk to engineers at, the, at their machine shops. What, do, do you think things like Tom's talking about with automation and, and, and new methods of manufacture, that, that what, are, what are the challenges that you've seen and you think people are looking to overcome? A lot of people think that automation are trying to take people's jobs um, and going along down that line of, well, they're trying to upskill these robots, so I'm going to be obsolete and stuff like that. We still need skills en skilled engineers to be able to program these robots. So when, when, when I did work for ETG, when they installed a robot, you would have high-spec training on this robot to be able to do the productivity that you wanted to do, and you're upskilling your workforce in that process. You can also have a robot doing two machines, and you haven't got day shift, lunch shift, night shift, so you're not playing three, six wage, tops, lots of wages, you're just investing in a new piece of machinery and I think the UK are a, a lot far behind other qu countries but we are getting there. But you are seeing automation out there now, yeah. aren't you? People looking a lot at more. using even manual products to do things quicker, you know. Um, even like pallet changers, that's a type of automation, that's what ETG really several, uh, sells high, sell highly and it works. We've seen customers where they've invested in more, they keep coming back for more and we've been to customers um, well, how did this benefit your uh, your your uh, how did this benefit your company? Well, it's made it's made the downtime not much longer because we're setting up thirty parts before we go to bed at, at night. They come back in, they're done. You're not going to be able to get that if you don't have this automation in place. Yep, absolutely. And you've got fat fingers, but when it comes to energy and you're stuff, talking to me. <laughs> when it comes to energy consumption and these these aspects. Are you finding a sales director that people are now shying away from investment because they're, they're worried about what's going to happen in the next few months? Or are they looking at it differently and maybe investing in technologies that will, that will overcome some of these obstacles? And if so, what are they? Four questions at once. Yeah, I can't remember them all. <laughs> in, in terms of, we, we, we're seeing more higher end sales go, go, go through. Um, so you argument if you could look at the, the full year, I'd anticipate our order intake will be will certainly be up on previous previous years, particularly for Nakamura up the, what it's been for the last five years. Um, but that's purely down to the product itself, so not necessarily the number of machines that we're putting out there, um, but more of the, the, the high technology. Um, if you look at it as a, as a ratio between three years ago, the, the type of inquiries that we had you know, you could say 25% were automated, 75% was a, was a standard machine. Now it's completely turned on its head. I don't think we have a single inquiry that it hasn't got some form of automation, whether that be, like Chloe said, a, a Mardico pallet system loading into it manually, all the way up to, to three, four machines being fully automated. And uh, you, you mentioned to me earlier about the Nakamura sales this year, and it might be good, uh, a good thing to tell the audience because it's certainly good for UK manufacturing how 
you know the success you've had this year. Yeah, it's not it's not a case of you know showing off on our, on on the sales of Nakamura, but it's just a it's just a pride thing to show that um, the, the the industry is in, is investing. You know, um, currently as we sit here now, our order intake is. Um, to year to date figure is now is exceeded what we did in our best year seven years ago you know and obviously we've we're only just passed halfway through the through the year so um, for Nakamura as a, as a product this year we, we've seen some serious investments come through and that's where I refer to the order the order value is that the type of machines that we're seeing and we're having to stock now so obviously yes our order intake's gone up um, but Mr. Dawes' pockets about to get a bit deeper because we're we're it's having to outlay already. more. Yeah, we're having to outlay more on higher technology. Yeah. You know. Um, well, well, when you saw this machine today, Tom, because it's the first time you've been to ECG, isn't it? When you saw the Nakamura and it's the MX100, that's some bit of kit, isn't it? I mean, you didn't have any machines like that in the machine shop you were working with. No, but you would probably have liked one. Oh, definitely. It's <laughs> great to have the um, the driven tooling at the top, but also the st- it's, it's the first time I've ever seen one with the static tooling as well okay so you basically got the turret at the bottom the turret at the bottom yeah, yeah and then yeah. you've got the b-axis head at the top so i think what you mean by that is you've got the b-axis swing which is able to do how many uh, how many degrees each way but then you've got the the static turret with the driven tools at the bottom so you're able to do on up one you're able to do some turning on the top of the on the top of the part and then at the bottom it could be threading on the end of the part so you're cutting down your cycle time you're utilizing your machine more and obviously you've got um, both spindles on there so the turret, turret can be doing the right hand side and the b-axis can be doing the left hand side sorry i just Which wanted is, to jump it, in there it's great and it's also with the gantry loading system you can set it up automation in in the machine exactly you you know? set it that up. is automation itself yeah. although you can add further automation well, to yeah it, load it? your billets in set it running walk away you don't need somebody there taking a part out putting a part in with fat fingers yeah exactly mm-hmm. if you got yeah. seems a theme that <laughs> i mean it is it is uh, very uh, interesting technology, Steve, the MX100. It's very mm. compact as well, so it's not something that machine shops will go, well, that, that's a huge piece of plant, and I'm going to need to replace two or three machines. They probably could replace two or three mm. machines with that, but it would be in a much smaller area. Um, would you say then, and I come back to the energy one, but, but running that machine would consume less energy than maybe running two or three different machines. Is that an area that maybe your sales team are... Yeah, are, well, certainly, you know... Uh, when you look around the factories here in the UK, foot, footprint is key, isn't it? You know, if they, if we can, if we can condense three machine processes down into 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 one, um, then obviously you've got um, handling time from moving from machine to the other. Um, you've got work in progress, the top, the parts sitting there waiting for the machine. Um, so yeah, that, that 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 is a common theme of a single part going through through one machine and and fully fully optimising it. Okay, now we um, have been here today for these guys, obviously, to review some kit, talk about some of the the stock machines that you're bringing through, also to talk about the open house, and let's touch on that now. And no, we're going to put the exact dates on the screen, but it's the end of November. Um, There's going to be lots happening, isn't there? What can you tell us so far? Well, we'll we'll have um, basically, obviously, all the products that we we represent. so we'll have, a, we'll have a theme of, again, it's all high end, whether it be horizontal, turn mill, multitasking, um, five axis, standard VMCs with, um, with kit from our, our, our suppliers. Um, and, I, and I think what we're going to be doing is reaching out to our, well, all of our customers, is, is asking them um, the day-to-day challenges they, they face in a, in a business, because I think that's, that's the most important thing. We can sit here and I can promote our machines, Nakamura being the best turn mill, obviously, you know, um, but it, it, it's very interesting to hear what their challenges are on a day-to-day basis. It may be compressors, it may be lighting, it may be the, the running cost of the factory, and, and we, we table those as a theme at our open house and, and have an open, frank um, conversation of business to business. So we are going to be streaming this event live um, at the end of uh, November. Of course, more details to come. I think what I took from our conversation, Steve, is that what you want to do is encourage some of your your users, your customers to come here and maybe tell their story in association mm. with MTD and, uh, and ETG to, to, to show others how they can uh, they have overcome some of the challenges yeah. that manufacturers well, every, face. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be a customer of ours. It's, a, it's an engineering company 
um, that feels that they have, have a challenge uh, that, they, the, that can come to an open forum um, where they've got similar companies in a similar position that, that may have had the same problem and, and, and found, a, found a solution and between them share, share ideas. Okay, so some great technology uh, to be seen here. Um, before we close this one off, um, guys, do you know the new machines that the engineering technology are going to be bringing out? Can you say too much at the moment? Bearing in mind this is going to be going out soon. This can is you, live can, now. Can, can, can you wet <laughs> our appetite, Steve? Something um, new? It's something, Any clues you can give us? Um, I, I, well, I'm, I'm looking at a picture of it now, and I'm, I'm trying to... It's, it's got black doors. <laughs> it's got black doors, and, um, yeah... So some big news to come uh, from the Engineering Technology Group in the coming days and weeks. And of course, the open house, which is going to be happening at the end of November. Uh, some ma machine reviews coming to the channel that both Chloe and Tom have done uh, today. So pretty exciting times for you, Steve. Thanks for accommodating us today. And, Thank you um, for coming. Good luck with your fat fingers. Thanks, guys. Cheers, mate. Bye. <laughs> for listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.